Hello Reward Clinicians, this is Ali Nisse and I come to you from the beautiful mountains of Stowe, Vermont where I've been staying for the past few days at the Stowe Mountain Lodge doing a little bit of skiing and uh, enjoying uh, this beautiful winter uh, of course, I've come to realize that uh, by no stretch of the imagination I am an expert skier in fact, uh, I would classify myself as a beginner and uh, you know, one of the things that I also realized is that I would prefer to stay a beginner. I have absolutely no interest in uh, getting hurt on some of the bigger trails as uh, I've fallen down quite a bit and I've come to realize that it's, uh, you know, at this point in my career, I do need all my body parts. It, it came to kind of make me think about the same way our endodontic systems should technically be uh, triaged. And uh, that's how that's the way we've done it for ESX system by having a basic advanced and advanced squared system for each uh, type of case. So you basically, with the ESX, you triage the case based on the level of difficulty. And some people may be just comfortable doing the basic cases, and that's completely fine, as I've come to realize with skiing. Uh, and for those who want to do some of the basic and advanced cases, there's that protocol. But today, since I can't talk about advanced skiing uh, to save my life, I would like to talk about the advanced squared ESX system, which is basically the protocol that most endodontists would be using, because those uh, that's the, the sequence that you would be using in very, very tough cases with lots of curvatures and calcifications, which of course requires more fire. So let's get back inside before we freeze and talk about the ESX advanced square system Okay, so what I was talking about during my walks there in the wilderness when I mentioned the ESX advanced square technique is What we now call the endo sequence blend protocol now the endo sequence blend is a universal protocol that helps deal with all kinds of cases whether they're simple or advanced now, to fully understand the, the blend protocol, we have to understand a basic concept here, and it's that instruments of different design, taper, and metallurgy shine best in different parts of the root canal. Now, what do I mean by that when I say that? Well, basically, no one instrument can achieve the same level of efficiency, control, and safety, which are three separate and at times mutually exclusive variables in all parts of the root canal simultaneously. For example, a curved lateral incisor, there's a straight part to the canal, which is the coronal half of it, and then there is a curvature that is in the apical half. As a result, we need to apply our knowledge of instrument design and metallurgy and hybridize or blend shaping instruments of different designs and different types of uh, metallurgy in order to use them most effectively in those parts of the root canal where they perform the best. First, let me summarize what we have learned about file designs and metallurgy over the past 25 years of rotary instrumentation. We now know that non-heat treated files are more efficient in cutting because they have more edge fidelity and sharper edges, but at the same time they are stiffer. On the other hand, we know that heat treated files are more ductile and as a result they're less efficient because the edge can uh, roll over. So their cutting is less efficient, but at the same time they are more flexible. We also know that files with a triangular cross-section cut better compared to landed files, but landed files provide us more control and center better in the root canal even though they cut less efficiently. Therefore, if we take the case of the lateral incisor, that example that I mentioned a little bit earlier, and divide this root in two halves, a coronal and an apical half, we know that the straighter top half can be shaped safely and efficiently with a triangular, non-heat treated file, while the apical half will certainly benefit from the use of a heat treated landed file. Now this combination provides us with efficiency on top half and safety and control on the bottom half of the root canal. Of course, 
Once this hybrid instrumentation is complete in the bottom half, we're now left with a variable taper preparation because we've used two different types of instruments. At this point, however, we've created a wide enough path, apically, that an efficient, non-heat-treated file that we originally used on the top part of the canal can now come and go all the way to the apex and blend these both of these halves of the root canal into one constant taper preparation that is ready for cone fitting and obturation. This is the matching of the file with the gutta percha cone is a process we call synchronicity in the endo sequence system. And this final file that comes in and blends the coronal and the apical half with a constant taper creates the synchronicity needed to for your cone fitting. Now, this blending of these two different metallurgy and file designs is really the core concept of the endo sequence blend protocol. This protocol helps us achieve both efficiency and predictability in all kinds of cases, from basic to advanced to all the way to the advanced square type of protocol in this one universal, robust and expansile protocol that allows you to treat all kinds of cases under the same umbrella. Now what's nice is that the blend protocol is an algorithm, really a suggestion that's designed so that you use the least number of files needed to complete any given case. You don't have to use all the files in the protocol, obviously, it's just a, an algorithm that you would use. And if the canal is easy, then you will end up using only two files to complete the case. That's the minimum number of files. And if it's more complicated, then you will use more files or as many files as is needed in order to complete the case safely and effectively. It basically provides you with a robust crown down protocol where you can maximize your safety and efficiency during the shaping process. Now, the non-heat treated files in this protocol are the endo sequence and ESX files and the heat treated files are the newly introduced endo sequence scout files. The endosequence scout files have a modified land design and they provide a lot of control and flexibility because they are heat treated with and have lands and they do great in the apical half of the root canal while the endosequence and the ESX files are non-heat treated and they're triangular in cross section and they are very efficient and therefore they work very nicely in the coronal half of the root canal and can come later and blend the whole thing in into one nice shape for us. As usual, the expediter file here is the first file that goes into the canal after your orifice opener and your mild hand filing. And what the expediter does is uh, it basically triages the case into small versus large. Basically, if the expediter reaches the apex easily right at the beginning, and by easily, I mean within one to two rhythm motions, then you start to move up in size and go towards sizes, you know, 35 and 40 and 45 and larger. Where you would end up stopping at is when you end up getting clean dentinal flutes and there is, uh, you know, you have cleaned up the canal adequately and you've achieved a nice apical stop. And however, if the expediter after one or two uh, rhythm motions, it's still not at the apex, then your goal is not to reach or push the expediter to the apex, but what you would do is then you would step down in size and move to the size 25 and the sequence scouts. And what those will do is also, you will use that for one or two rhythm motions. And if that one is not at the apex already, then you move down in size, so on and so forth. This is a passive step down process. And this is the way how you distribute the cutting among several files. And as a result, you end up putting the least amount of pressure on the file, on the dentin, and you, you basically maximize your safety. The core of this technique, however, is the rhythm motion. The rhythm motion is defined as one to three light strokes to engagement, and then followed by removal of the file from the canal and wiping the chip space clean with either an endo swipe or your alcohol gauze outside the canal, and then also irrigating inside of the root canal so you can remove the debris. 
It's a small distinction here. Originally with the ESX system, I was recommending the SSD, which is a single stroke and clean, which is still is the best and the least torque required motion. But I found a lot of people were not doing uh, that because it just, it, you know, it's, it seemed to be lab <laughs> laborsome for some people. So instead of that, you can use the rhythm motion, which is anywhere from one to three strokes, but they're light strokes. Uh, and then you remove the file and wipe it clean. Also, it's important to note that no one file is used for more than two rhythm motions. Okay, so uh, every file is used for one or two rhythm motions. And if it's not already at the apex at that point, then you got to move down in size. And between each file, what's a good idea is to continue to irrigate the root canal and recapitulate with the size 10 hand file that you have. It's important to know that this is a very passive crown down instrumentation technique and force is really not required. Each instrument should really move down passively using really no more than the weight of the hand piece, which is helping to move the process file down. And if at any point in time, any file is not moving down easily, you have to make sure you stop immediately and recapitulate to make sure your path is open. And then you move down in size. In small canals, once the first file reaches the apex, then instrumentation is continued back up in size. And usually the minimum size that you want to finish the canal to is the size of the expediter, uh, which is around a size 3004 file. The appropriate size cone is then matched and the canal is obturated with that uh, given file that is your master file. Now, of course, I will share more videos to better explain this technique in the near future. I just wanted to have this introduction for you guys to this very robust system. And at the same time, I also want to demonstrate this blend uh, technique and protocol in the mesiobuccal root of a mandibular molar true tooth for your evaluation. So the mesial root of this uh, mandibular molar is a true tooth and we're having a mesial view of it. I'm just basically uh, refining the axis preparation using an ultrasonic to remove some of the wax that's inside the tooth and then proceed to use Canal Clean, which is a, a surfactant containing EDTA and uh, antiseptic uh, containing solution and leave that in the canal. And then we proceed to place a size 10 hand file gently and passively to where it goes and where it stops. The goal is not to reach the apex right at the beginning at this point, but just create a uh, confirmation of a path that is open and then follow that up with an orifice opener. Here I'm using the ESX 2008 orifice opener with the endoswipe to remove the debris and do one or two rhythm motions in each canal. And that does create some coronal flaring. After that, we proceed to use the expediter and the expediter here, as you can see, after one or two rhythm motions is not reaching the apex. And as a result, we know we're dealing with a small canal and we'll move down. Here I'm using the ultrasonic and water to quickly remove any loose debris and come back and add the canal clean, which is the surfactant containing EDTA and antiseptic solution uh, afterwards. And now moving down in size to the 25 endosequence scout. And on the mesiolingual canal, I think we've pretty much reached the apex in this tooth because these files are modified landed and have a lot of nice control and move down. And you can see in the mesiobuckle that has a little sharp hook, it's moved down very nicely as well. And then I proceed to add the canal clean. And now at this point, we're we go on and measure the working length with our size 10 hand file. Once the working length has been established in both canals, what uh, we would be doing is clinically, you would expose a radiograph to confirm this. And uh, here we set the length, obviously visually, because it's a clear tooth, and uh, basically move that to a size 20 endosequence scout and you can see that very easily the 20 endosequence scout now follows that path and goes around and reaches the apex. This uh, files are heat treated and uh, now after we've reached the apex it's time to start our disinfection process you adding the hypochlorite to the tooth and begin the instrumentation that way and since the 20 has reached the apex now we're moving back up we're trying to get the size 25 to the same length as the 20 did and you can see here it nicely follows 
with uh, the endosequence scout file and in between files we proceed to irrigate with our side vented needle with sodium hypochlorite. I use usually uh, anywhere from full strength to half strength. From time to time you could also use the ultrasonic if you prefer or if you don't have one you can proceed with just the regular irrigation but it's a good idea to use the ultrasonic to remove debris. Now we move on to use the expediter and the goal is to get the expediter to the apex and the expediter nicely although it is a heat non-heat treated instrument it has already uh, We've created a path that's wide enough with a size 25 endosequence scout so the non-heat treated um, uh, expediter can reach the apex easily. And finally at the end I like to do some passive ultrasonic irrigation you know, or active continuous flow ultrasonic irrigation using these uh, E11 or E12 ultrasonic tips with the U-file size uh, 20 and once that is done then it's time to fit uh, our cones and you can fit size 30 or sometimes 25 and thinner cones and that once the main cones have been fitted and established then what you would do is uh, place the uh, biceramic sealer in the coronal half of the roots and use the hand file to push it down to the apex Hydraulic condensation is a sealer-based uh, obturation, so the cone is only, act, is only acting as a condenser and a path for retreatment, and you basically seed it all the way to the full length, and it pushes the cement to the sides, and here we go, we have our uh, fill all the way to the end, and at this point you would proceed to sear off at the orifice and condense up coronally. And that's basically it, your endosequence blend instrumentation and obturation using hydraulic condensation. Anyway, I hope you found this uh, tutorial helpful and uh, are going to get a chance to try these new endosequence scout files for a little bit more control in apical instrumentation. I'm going to have more videos in this area for you guys uh, very soon, uh, so stay tuned and don't forget to share this video if you liked it. And in the meantime, for Rewildendo, I'm Ali Nase, and let's save some teeth.